So this video is for the bag sort for the second half of the J row blocks J7 through J13. So I've already gone through and labeled the big blocks that came with it. And so I have left is J10 and J11. So when I get to those blocks, I will utilize these squares as part of my sort for those blocks. But for now, I'm going to set this aside. The other item to consider is that I have some of these that are modified. So those are in my book. This is J12 that's modified. And then 11 and 9 is also modified. So I've already labeled all those. So as I come upon them, I will be able to know that I need to reference my book. So for now, J7, we're going to use the book as our template. So time to dump them out. And these are all these little tiny squares. So as with the bag sorts, I'm going to take the pieces that are large and obvious. I'm going to set this stuff around, and I'm assuming that these squares are for my J7 block. And there are 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, so there's 9 times 4 is 36 little tiny squares, and then 5 of these. So I will have to sort out all these little squares as I sort out the rest of the block. So as I'm going through these, I'm going to verify that these are all the same size because it's very possible that they may not be. So I'm going to check it not on one side but on two because a rectangle, there might be one that's a little slightly off. This one seems to be slightly smaller, but I'm having issues here. This is what the stiletto's for, Jill. All right. So, this is the same size, and I've checked it on both sides just to make sure that we were, were good. So, that's good. But I'm checking each one of these as I go through here. So, I've got all of my J7 pieces laid out. All of the squares that are of similar size are for this block. I just wanted to verify that before I confirmed it. So, I'm going to mark all of my pieces... J7, and then I will be ready to mark my pieces for focus fabric. All right, so I got all my pieces labeled with my J7 block number, and now I've got to go through and label them with my red dot for my focus fabric, and my focus fabric is going to be in the, the checkerboard design with five focus fabric bits in each one, so it's going to be in an X formation throughout each of the nine patch squares. So I'm just going to put a red dot on those on those particular squares and the rest of them are not going to be an issue. Now I'm going to check my fabric to see if I have a directional fabric and indeed I do. I have a striped fabric. This is my fabric for my J7 block, so it's very directional. And it will look different if it's one way versus the other. So I take a ballpoint pen, because I labeled this in thin black Sharpie, and I'm going to mark each one of these with an arrow. And, and it doesn't matter which way the arrow is going, I just got to make sure that the arrow is going the same direction on every one of my focus fabric blocks. So, and I'm bumping them, but it's not the end of the world as long as I know which ones I need to label. The reason I do this in ballpoint pen is because it's different than the Sharpie. And on small sizes like this, it's good to have a different material or a different kind of mark. On, on your squares so that you know what it means. Because if I put another Sharpie mark on here and they're so small, it may coincide with my seven or I may not understand exactly why it's on there and things of that nature. So I'm going to be able to bag this up 
with my labeled square. I have the squares labeled. I would put in my baggie with my pieces and move on to the next one. So the next block is J8 and I have four of these shaped and I've also got four what looks like smaller ones here and I've got more on this. So there's going to be a lot of what I classify these as football and even more on this. So there's going to have a lot of different sizes of this. So my, my goal right now is to get the ones that are the correct size. So those are too big and I'm sure that might be the ones that I have a lot of. Here's smaller ones and those seem to be the ones for this but this is an EPP modified block so it may not be but I'm gonna put these in one pile. I put all my different pieces from my bag in categories like I have all my little rectangles over here. I've got big pieces over here I've got triangles on this side and I've got all my little football shapes over here. I basically will categorize them based on what's in the bag. So I don't have a pile of footballs if there's not a bunch of footballs. And I don't have a bunch of triangles if there's not a lot of triangles and so on and so forth. So my goal is to find the right one. And a lot of the times with these football shapes they're not exact to the book because it's really hard to get the math exactly the same on the book that it or on the paper pieces that it is in the book. So I am grouping these by their size as I go. Because these little ones, these little ones here might be the ones I'm looking for, but I won't know until I go through every single one. So, yeah. So I've sorted my football shapes into piles, and I've got four of the little ones, four of the big ones, and a big old pile of other sizes. And they seem to be all the same size, but if I look at the block that's needed, I only need four groups of four is 16. So if I've got more than 16 in here, that means that one of these is going to be four the J8 block and so again process of elimination 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay so I do have the four I need in here in this pile and then my next thing is, are they all the same size? So I'm going to put these in a pile in my hand, first thing first, and line them all up to see if they're all exactly the same. So if I mess with these long enough, these are all exactly the same because they line up exactly and they're smooth and they come to the same point. So it's not going to matter which ones I use for these so but they just seem so big so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna refer to my booklet because this one is modified I wanna know exactly what shape I need for that block and let me move these so J9 Okay, so this is my J9 and my J11 is also here. So the big footballs are for J11. J9 is going to have bigger leaves. So as I look at this, this is the one that's going to have one of, or four of the 20 that I have a pile of. This is the one that's going to have the four out of this pile. So this is going to be the same size as J10. And I'm going to use that. So I am going to keep these this pile of 20 together. That means by process of elimination that these tiny footballs, even though they're smaller than the ones drawn in the book, these are the ones for J8. And that's because the math is not the same. So I'm going to use these 
for my J8 footballs, but I'm not going to put them in place because they're applique pieces. I'm going to set them aside because I have to find these exact rectangles. So I'm going to sift through my rectangle pieces and my little rectangle pieces, and there's two little squares in here, and I'm assuming that's one of them, and I'm wrong. So I'm going to go through here and find these pieces. All right, so there's two smallish squares left that are bigger than the squares for J7, and those two squares are the squares for J8, but I want to show you this. They're significantly bigger than the ones in the block, but if you assemble the entire unit, you get a block that fits. So if I put this in the middle here, this is also thinner, but it's the right length. This is going to be thinner than the picture, and this is wider because it goes along with the square. And my whole thing about making sure they line up with each other is the case here. So even though this little little rectangle is longer, it is the same size as this square. And then these are also thinner, but they're the long lines. They're the right length as they should be. And then this is the same exact size as the other one. So that's how you get your little log cabin unit here is by starting with the square that's larger than the center and using the rectangles that are thinner but the same length as this unit. And then I've got these left for another block and then I, they're, they're also thin-ish but they're, they are thicker than those. And these there's four of these left over for another block as well. I have to find two of these total, so I found one, and then I got to find these things, and then the four triangles. So I'll get with this, and here's my footballs over here. So I will get to sorting on those. So for the triangles, there are four triangles of the same size. There are two that are slightly larger than this, and then there's two more that are larger yet. So obviously use the four of the same size. All right, so the triangles fit exactly and these outer rectangles fit exactly. So you've got just, this is a little bit of an adjustment and these are a little bit of an adjustment. But now it's time to label them with the J8 label on each one of these. And then I'll be ready to do the dots. All right, so I've got my, la my pieces labeled. Whoops, I missed the leaves. I've got my pieces labeled, and they shift around a little bit as I hold them, so that happens. As long as I can still identify their needed locations, I'm okay. So as I look for my focus fabric, all of the leaves are focus fabric. So I'm going to mark those. And then these big rectangles are all background, and then this outside triangle is focus fabric, and then the frame around the square is focus fabric, but not the square inside. So all those get red dots. And then I gotta check to see if my fabric is directional to see if I have to mark directional. And this is my J8 fabric, so yes it is. And actually it has an up and a down as well as a left and a right. So I will mark that on my pieces and I'm going to have, I'm going to have to mark the directions on this after I take these off. So this is up and so as I do this with my ballpoint pen again, I'm going to make sure that I mark the up position so I know exactly which way the fabric is to go. Now, because when I do this, that means all of my fabric is going to be exactly the same way and it's going to look all nice and uniform. And I absolutely love what that does. And so now that I've labeled all that, I can put these on here and label the up, which of course is on the 45 because of the fact that these are on an angle. So I'm going to try to put these in position as best I can and put an up on the 45. But when I go to put this on, 
I'll be able to, you know, finagle that and say, yep, that's up. So that's how I do those on an angle. Is I just, you know. So it's ready to bag that up and move on to the J9 block. So now we're up to the J9 block and EPP modified like we discussed earlier. So I'm going to work from my booklet. And I already know that four of these 20 footballs are for this one. So I'm going to set these here. I'm not going to put them on their position because they're an applique. I need to find the other pieces first. So there's four of those and I'll put the rest of them away for the next block. Now I need to just find these long pieces in stages and I'll be able to move forward from there. So I've located all of my pieces for my J9 block and so it's just a matter of labeling them. Now I want to make sure that I can still see my picture in my book because that's going to tell me um, where my focus fabric is supposed to go. So I will get to labeling these and then I'll be ready to do my red dots. Alright, so now I've labeled all my J9 pieces and I'm going to look at this and I've got the center square is focus fabric and the outer frame, so all four of these outside pieces, and then the little football things. So those are all focus fabric as well. And then I'm going to check for a directional, and I have this fabric, and it's not directional. So I'm not going to worry about labeling my arrows. I'm going to bag this up and move on to the next one. So now I am up to J10, and my J10 block is one of these four and a half inch squares that came with my row pack. So this is my base block that I'm going to applique everything onto. And then I've got all these footballs, so there's 16 of those. And then there's this guy. So this is going to be the base this is going to be focus fabric so what you're going to have here is a focus fabric square with focus fabric football surrounding it on background big giant square with four footballs in the middle with background colors so as i label these i'm going to do j10 here and i'm going to put a dot on the smaller square because it's focus fabric and my focus fabric is directional so these little bits are directional and so I'm going to label that with my arrow so I can set this aside so these are for my J10 block and I'm going to put those in my baggie right now with my focus fabric because that way I know exactly where everything is and now it's a matter of laying out and labeling the footballs so I've got my pile of 16 footballs already here because I sorted them out from my pile and I'm just going to put these and they are a little different shapes but that's again because of the math doesn't work the same as it did in the book. So but these are all the same size to each other and they will look fine on your block. So just when you do line them up you're going to want to make sure that the points come together and line up to there. So you're going to have the points touching. Let me show you. You have the points touching here. And then you want to make it look as even as possible when you're applicating these so that this looks like a circle with an unbroken line. So that gives you a reference of how to do these in the middle. So if you put this to the corner of your square then you're going to have that so I'm going to put all of these out and then I can label them with red and I can label them with J10 and then I can red dot and then I can mark my directional so I've got my footballs laid out and the square this focus fabric square is the same size that is as it is in the book but the footballs are a little smaller than they are in the book. So how I would play this when I'm going to applique this down is I'm going to make 
this in the middle because these are background pieces on my focus fabric I want this to look united so I'm gonna have this there's gonna be a ledge here because this is gonna be applique onto this and then I'm gonna be able to use my positioning of the focus fabric footballs to make those look like they're contiguous but there's really going to be a space from this one to these three but that's going to give you the best look when you go to applique it down so it looks consistent so right now I'm going to label these with my J10 and then I'm going to dot them so now I'm going to label my J10 footballs with my focus fabric and it's going to be in groups of three all these outside ones are going to be dots. So leave the four in the middle alone and put dots on the rest of them. And then because I have a directional fabric I'm going to label these. I'm going to make sure the ends are pointed in the right line and then mark up. So that's the trick with these so that when you put them on your fabric you can get the right direction going without having to relay them out that's the importance of this arrow thing so I'm gonna go through this and then I'm gonna bag all these up so up to J11 and J11 is another modified block it's also the last block of this bag that's gonna have a four and a half inch square so that's the first thing I'm gonna start with with is with my four and a half inch square piece which is going to be background so I don't have to worry about putting my red dot in there. So I'm going to put that up there and I'm going to go to the book and look at this and so I have four footballs left and they're large and they're these. So when it's paper pieces diagram it should fit just about exactly because paper pieces made the block, made the paper pieces and then of course made the diagrams. So these are slightly off but not really so that one just slid because it's on you know paper on paper it doesn't necessarily stay in place then there's four more pieces and the other four pieces are like these little spade tips you find on a shovel so I've got those here and these are for another block so I'm gonna set these little teardrop pieces aside and take the little spade bit pieces and those are the ones that make up the center. So I'm going to place those with my stiletto like everything else and put those into locate into their spaces. And again, I'm going to have to refer to this picture just to make sure that I do everything right. So as I slide these in, I'm going to try to slide this over so I can see this and it's real straightforward all the pieces that are on here right now are focus fabric but I got to check for directional so I'm going to label all of these J11 and then I'm going to look at my fabric so they're all labeled J11 and I'm going to dot all of these because they're all focus fabric and then I do have a directional fabric and it looks like a little crossword puzzle but it's not really. It's this little pattern, but it kind of looks like a crossword puzzle when you get up on it. So clearly directional. So it'll look way different if it's on a 45 degree angle versus a 90 degree angle. And in this case, I am going to make the 45 degree angle be the 90. And what I mean by that is I'm going to make the straight lines radiate out from the center because it, I think it'll be a nice cool effect. So I'm going to put all these little arrows pointing outwards from the center and then I'm going to label the picture the same way so I know I did that. So all of these are going to have actual arrows on my diagram so that I know that that's what that means. And I don't have to then relay it out when I go to prep my block. And I will bag this up and move on to the next one. Now we're up to J12, and J12 is modified block. And basically all they've done is taken out this little strip. So that's what your block is going to look like, and you're going to lay this out. But I want to cover one thing beforehand. If you look at the Dear Jane picture on the front of the book, you will see that it's sideways in the quilt. 
I have done a little bit of research and talked to some people on Facebook. And the reason that is, is because the museum actually hung the quilt 90 degrees sideways. So it really should be what we think is the left edge is really the top. So they hung it wrong. And when we, when the book was developed by Brenda Papadakis, it was like that. So if you want to put it in there like that, you can, but it was originally intended to be upright. And so, and this is what this says. It's if you wanted to do that or whatever, you can do it sideways or you can do it right side up. I'm going to do it right side up because it will really bother me to have a basket sideways in my quilt. But other people want to be true to the original. You make your own decision. But working from this is I'm going to make these pieces. There's not many pieces left, so obviously... These two pieces are for the basket, and then the big giant rectangle, and then there's two small triangles and two large triangles. Obviously, the smaller of the four are going to be for the basket, and then you have this piece for the handle. Real straightforward assembly block, so or layout or whatever. I'm not quite to assembly, but you know what I'm trying to get at. So I'm going to J12 all of these. What is it? Six pieces total. I love it when they have tiny amounts of pieces because they go quick on assembly. All right, so I'm going to label these all J12. And then, as you can tell, the red dots are going to go on the handle and then on these two angled pieces. So this one and this one, and that's it. I do not have my fabric for J12 and 13 picked out. So I'm just going to label my up anyway because I can always ignore it later but I, it's harder to go back and put it on it's just a matter of relaying it out but I don't want to do extra steps if I don't have to so with that that is the J12 block and I'm going to bag that up and move on to the next bit and now that we're on block 13 of this particular packet all the other pieces are obviously going to be for this block so my teardrop pieces are applique so I'm going to set those aside up here and my triangles and the square square in the middle and probably should have put that in there first square triangle and then my little pentagon home plate units go on the edges and then I'm going to surround it all by these there's a couple of them that are a different length but they're all the same width by these um, little rectangles that go around the outside. So I'll lay those out and then I'll mark them as J13. So I got my pieces laid out and I'm going to label them as J13 and then I'll be able to label my red dots for focus fabric. So now I'm ready to label my focus fabrics. The teardrop units are all focus fabrics so I'm going to put dots on those. And then the rectangle units, just the middle ones on the outside, are focus fabric. And there's four rectangles that are longer than the rest of them. And those four go on the outsides of the bottom and the top, so they're horizontal. All the rest of them fill in the other spaces. So then we got, this is focus fabric, and then these are background. So... All of those stay with no red dot, and I don't know what my fabric is, so I'm going to label that for directional. And then I'm going to move the ones here in the middle, and then I can label my little teardrop units accurately. So I put those in place, and then I can label the direction as up on these. That's up. And that's up. And then this one is up. And this one is up like this. And I'm going to bag this one. And I'm going to be done with the J7 through J13 bag sort, thus completing 
the row J bag sort completely. 